our agenda today. Okay, so what have we done so far today? We've posted our proving ground sketches, our three approaches, and then very important for the second part of the proving ground, to comment on another student's sketches. And it's not a bad idea to comment on more than one, to make yourself look at how others in the class are solving this creative problem with central dynamic and a play of positive and negative space. And your input to their designs will really help them understand what's recognizable, what's being clear, and will help them when they go to the next stage, which is in the next assignment, right? So you can just go to next on the bottom or go further into this unit. And we move, once you're finished with proving ground two, to the logo assignment, right? Where you're gonna take your best approach and turn it into a vector. Now I'm gonna introduce this here, even though we are the Adobe section and I do the freeware in the afternoon. This is a link to the freeware vector program that you can use in your browser. It's called vector.com. It's the freeware equivalent to Illustrator, just like PhotoP is the freeware equivalent that we use to Photoshop. The difference is vector.com is not meant to be a clone of Illustrator. It's meant to be, you do have to sign in with any kind of email. It is free but it is meant to be a, um, oh, they've built a bunch of, I forgot about that. They've added a bunch of AI features, which we have to just ignore. So we go to new artwork. It's meant to be a more browser-based kind of friendly vector creator. And what is nice about it is they deeply simplify the tools. You'll see that Illustrator is fairly more complicated, but it's got the basic kind of components. So what I'm going to teach you about in a vector in Illustrator to, to turn your refined sketch into a finished black shape vector, I'm going to teach you about the shape tools, which should be very familiar to you, right? And so in vector.com, the shape tools are here. You can always layer up vector shapes with the shape tools, just like you did with your emoji project. But the difference is now when I use the shape tools and I can place, place them together, I can also do things like merge them together, right? And I can do things with the pen tool to augment them full, you know, augment them more fully. So we'll get into all of that. And then the pencil tool is a free drawing tool, free vector drawing tool. What I mean by free drawing is not that it doesn't cost any money. It means it just lets you click and draw. And as long as you contain your shape, it will give you a vector shape. The problem with it is it plots a ton of anchor points, which is not great. And you will see that once you have the anchor, or the vector set, it didn't quite close. This is where the pencil tool is where vector.com really falls down and where Illustrator is really a much better program. And then there's also the pin tool where you just plot your anchors individually, you know, click and move, click and move, click and move. And then you close. And then you have full control of each anchor point after the fact. Now what I like best about vector.com, because there is no online free clone of Illustrator, is that they have a lot of help. So if you go to this info button, this help button, and you go to the FAQs, And the about, I want to get to their tutorials, which they have moved. Ah, the user guide. So here it is with their little hamburger. So their user guide is this beautiful collection of different tutorials to help you learn how to use it, which will also help you 
understand Illustrator. In the, the new internet way, they've made it a Reddit so that different answers are, are upvoted. So that is vector.com, which is linked in the assignment should you want to work on your vector outside of class. What I'm going to encourage you to do is to try to work just inside of class in this section using Adobe Illustrator. So to do that, we take our refined sketch. Make sure you have just a refined sketch copy. So here is mine. I'm also going to take my composited version. Just throw these into my assignment four folder. And now for the first time, we're going to open up Illustrator. And the way we do it is you right click on your refined sketch. Doesn't matter how big it is. And you say open it with Adobe Illustrator 2024. And this is the last thing we'll be doing with this assignment today. Because Illustrator is a big program, it will take a little while to open. You're opening it for the first time. And if you're signed into Photoshop, it should keep that Adobe sign in for Illustrator 2. But if not, just use the same email. And I'm just going to show you the basic shape tools. I'm going to show you the pen tool. And I'm going to show you how you set up your work. So just like in Photoshop, how we always have to be very mindful of the, the resolution and the pixel space. In Illustrator, we don't have to worry about resolution at all because vectors don't have resolution. But we do need to worry about what's called the artboard. So the artboard is that white thing that's floating behind. We want our sketch to fit on our artboard. Right now, these are pixels. If you zoom in, you can see the pixels, right? Because this is a raster file that we've opened in Illustrator. Then you're going to just click on it. And you're going to hold down Shift and Option. Because in Illustrator, you have to hold down Shift so it doesn't distort. And then drag it and center it on your artboard. So that you're seeing your black shapes on the white. I kind of like it that it you can see it this way. Because you see that you are only making black shapes. You are not making any white shapes, right? Okay, so we shrink it onto the artboard. That's step one. Step two is you'll see your layers off to the side. You're going to double click on your layer because this is your sketch. And you're going to click on this image here, which says dim images. And you're going to dim them to 50%. This is what's called onion skinning, right? We've done this before. So even though I brought in my black refined sketch, I onion skinned it so it's a 50% gray. Now I'm going to lock that layer, just like we've done in Photoshop. You lock it with a little padlock. Now I'm going to add a new layer, just like we've done in Photoshop. But in Illustrator, layers are purely organizational. OK, now I'm going to show you how we can start tracing our image as a vector. Now, the first thing I want to do is the simplest basic shape. And that's going to be this rectangle right here. So if you remember exercise two and the, the vector shape tools within Photoshop, the emojis, this is what the shape tools in Illustrator are, these vector shapes. We have a rectangle tool. We have an ellipse tool. We have a polygon tool. We have a star tool. We have a line segment tool. Don't use the line segment tool, just like we didn't use the line in Photoshop. So if I use the rectangle tool, it makes sense that I can just click and drag a rectangle and kind of place it on top of my sketch. What's very similar to Photoshop is that it will automatically fill it with a color, but it might not be the color I want. So what's different than Photoshop is we have these two squares. And these are the two things you can control for each vector. You can control the outline, which is called the stroke. And you can control the fill. I want all of your strokes to be empty. So they should have the red bar, which means no stroke on it at the beginning. We're just doing simple black shapes. And then your fill, you want to make black. So you can double click that and then go into this very bottom left corner. Or you can always just click on the defaults here. 
which is a white fill and a black stroke, swap them, and then empty the stroke like that. Either way, you'll get to a black shape. Now you'll notice immediately that my black rectangle is not curved like, like my sketch. And if I want it curved, how can I do that? I can't do transform. So what I can do instead is use the black triangle, which is called the, the large selection tool. And then I can right click and I can see my options. You will see transform there, and you will see something called shear. This is the closest there is to a warp or a distort. And it's just so awkward. <laughs> but you could play with this. But it's all done by, by angles and percentages. It's all very exact. So you can see how I can manipulate it using transform, but it's not the best option. The better option, which we didn't do with shape tools in Photoshop, is that I can use the small selection tool, this little white rectangle. And with that, I can curve those corners using what's called the corner tools. And I can add anchor points using the pen tool or just using plus. And right above the center here, I'm going to add an anchor point. And then I can use that small selection tool and click on that anchor point and then move it. So basically you make simple shapes and then you can alter them. Now I'm going to take that anchor point, which I've selected, right? And I'm going to convert it. We're going to learn all this. So it's a little weird. And we use the anchor point tool for that. I'm going to convert it from being straight to being a curve. And I do that by holding down shift and dragging to the side. And now you see I'm pulling out what are called bezier handles. Those bezier handles will give me an even curve on both sides. And then I just go back to the small selection tool and click. And now I've got that curve on the top. What if I want a curve on the bottom? I actually don't think I do want a curve on the bottom. But I want to play more with this curve at the top. So I'm going to use my small selection tool. I have to click outside of it and then hover over it until it's white to isolate it. And then, otherwise I'll just be selecting all of them. And then I'm really going to pull it up. And if you hold down shift, it will lock it on the axis, which is helpful. Okay, now the problem is, you remember those curved corners I had before? Those are causing little bumps because you can only, I was only affecting one anchor point. So now I'm going to use that small selection tool and click on that anchor point, right? And then hit delete and it gets rid of it, but it also got rid of the curve. So the better option is to use your pen tool and the delete anchor point tool and then just click on those anchor points that you don't want. And now that curve is a lot cleaner. Now I go back to my large selection tool. I see all the anchors and this is a good scale tool. You see how it's moving everything together. And I think I'm going to do it like this. And then maybe I'll move it up a little bit. Okay, good. So you're basically coming up with your refined versions using vector tools of your sketch. So now that was just the simplest shape, right? Now, how can I build a shape like this? Well, I can use that rectangle tool again, make a new one. And now that I've kind of learned the tricks of it, I can use my small selection tool, my white arrow. And I can taper it like that. I'm actually not even going to worry about the other side because I'm going to do central symmetrical. 
and then I can click inside it and I can use the rounding tool, the corner tool.